Hey guys, I'm here at the Northern Illinois University campus. And unfortunately on this campus was a pretty sad massacre. It happened on Valentine's Day, 2008. Five people were killed. So I'm gonna walk down and show you guys the specific hall where this massacre took place. And we're, we're gonna walk along the way, tell you guys more of the details. And then afterwards, we're gonna show you a couple of the victims' graves. So anyway, let's get into it. Follow me. So Northern Illinois University is located in DeKalb, Illinois. And as I mentioned earlier, the massacre happened February 14th or Valentine's Day, 2008. The perpetrator's name was Stephen Kazmierzak, who was 27 years old at the time of the murders. Now, Stephen arrived at the university here at about 3.05 p.m. He entered a large auditorium building, which was called Cole Hall. In that building was an oceanography class that was going on. There was approximately 120 students in that building. Stephen was wearing dark boots, a black t-shirt with the word terrorist on it. And with him was four different weapons. The four guns that Stephen brought with him were a 12 gauge Remington shotgun, a Glock 19 semi-automatic pistol, a 380 Sig Sauer P232 semi-automatic pistol, and a 380 High Point semi-automatic pistol. When Stephen arrived at Cole Hall here, he opened the door, but the surviving witnesses stated that it felt like he had kicked in the door as he had used that much force. When he entered into the auditorium area, he began firing at students. He then turned his attention towards the instructor who was closer to the stage he shot at the instructor, and so the instructor tried to run to an exit at the corner of the building, but that exit in particular was actually locked. The instructor then ran towards the main exit, which is unfortunately the same exit that all the other students tried to run out of. So there was a ton of students who were kind of stuck at the front entrance as there are so many trying to run out. Many other students chose to hide between their seats. After shooting all six of his shotgun rounds, Stephen fired on the room's remaining occupants with his nine millimeter pistol. He had approximately 50 rounds with him. He ended up shooting and killing himself before police reached the room. The police recovered around 55 unexpended rounds, including two different fully loaded magazines. Now a total of 23 people were actually shot, but five of them died. Now from the time that Steven entered the room to the time that he ended the shooting spree by killing himself, it only lasted about six minutes from 3.05 to 3.11 p.m. Now let's name off the victims' names. I feel like their names need to be remembered in this. Now the victims were 20-year-old Catalina Garcia, which later in the video we'll be visiting her grave. Juliana G. Hant, who was 32. Ryan Mace, who was 19. Daniel Parmenter, who was 20. 
Gail Dubowski, who was also 20. Now again, I apologize if I accidentally said their names wrong. Now three of the victims were pronounced dead on scene here, and those were Catalina Garcia, Juliana Gihant, and Ryan Mace. Daniel Parmenter was declared dead shortly after arriving at the hospital at four o'clock. Gail Dubowski was flown to the nearest trauma center, but she was pronounced dead around 4.14 p.m. Now, a little bit more background on Stephen, the perpetrator. Now, he was a current student at the University of Illinois at the time of the shooting, but he actually was a former student at this university here. He was actually treated for mental illness at a psychiatric center, and he was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder. He actually enlisted in the United States Army in September of 2001. However, he was discharged before completing his basic training as he apparently lied on the application about his mental health. Now at the different colleges he attended, he was described as a pretty standout, well-regarded student and seemed pretty normal according to most staff members. Now, Stephen actually worked less than a month at the Rockville Correctional Prison for Women. He worked there from September 24th to October 10th. Now, his reasons for leaving were actually unclear. He simply just didn't come back to work. Now, weeks before the shooting happened, Family and friends described Stephen's behavior as becoming more and more erratic. Stephen's girlfriend confirmed that he was taking Xanax, Ambien, and Prozac, but that she said that he stopped taking the Prozac about three weeks prior to the shooting. Uh, she also mentioned that during their two-year relationship, that she had never seen him display any sort of violent tendencies of any kind and said that he was simply the nicest guy that she had ever met. After the shooting, authorities intercepted many packages that were sent to her that were obviously sent from Stephen to her. And these packages included many different ammunition, a gun holster, a textbook on serial killers, and a book titled The Antichrist. Now I believe Stephen entered through one of the corners of the building. I don't believe he entered the main door so I'm trying to figure out which door he entered. I think it said Southwest. So again, I don't know if it, it could have been one of these doors on the side, but I, I don't think it was one of these main doors. Now again, what I find kind of ironic is of course, no weapons allowed, right? But as we've, we've heard, people will bring guns wherever they feel like if they want to commit a shooting. Now there's doors kind of on all the different sides. So I mean, For all I know, he could have entered one of these side doors. Now, one of the questions most of you guys may have is, why did Steven choose this location for the shooting to begin with? And again, I don't really have that information. I don't think 
Stephen even disclosed that in any paper as he didn't leave any suicide note or anything. So again, he did attend school here and he graduated from here. So who knows, maybe he had some sort of resentment of some kind against this school. And who knows, maybe he had a class in that Cole Hall. Uh, I mean, again, your guess is as good as mine. I'm once again back at the Queen of Hearts Cemetery here in Hillside, Illinois. And this is the same cemetery that Tony Spilatro's grave is. So if you guys missed that video, I'll leave a link to it at the end of this one. Anyway, I'm here at the same cemetery. I'm visiting the grave of Catalina Garcia. She was one of the victims of the Northern Illinois University shooting. Again, Catalina was only 20 years old. Without further ado, let's visit Catalina. It's hard to tell with the sun glare off of this, but January 15th, 1988 to of course, February 14th, 2008. Again, as I mentioned earlier in this video, Valentine's Day is supposed to be one of those happy, loving, joyous days. Even if you don't even have a significant other, it's just kind of supposed to be nice. So it's supposed to be just a, a nice, loving day. And for it to turn into a, a terrible massacre, it's just absolutely terrible. Again, rest in peace to Catalina and the other victims of this tragedy. Again, it's just one of those unfortunate things that it just is becoming more and more common now in the United States. Uh, shootings are popping up every day. Anyway, guys, again, my name is Harmon. Thank you for watching my videos. Again, if you're new around here and you enjoy this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching.